Today we will look at uh, language acquisition, that is learning language. Like we have uh, discussed about language and dialect and uh, remember I, I discussed those parameters with you through which people would want to believe that something is language and something is dialect. Remember those things? Remember? Why something is language and why something certain, why, why certain languages are considered language and certain languages are considered dialects, we discussed some of those parameters uh, with you last time. Similarly, when, and, and those parameters do not make much of a, much of a sense in, in technical terms, they are all very superficial, they are all very trivial. Similarly, when, you, when we talk about language acquisition, there are so many things that people would want to tell you, which do not really make much of a sense. However, we cannot deny all of them right away. So, if, if, uh, if I ask you again, and which I have asked you earlier to think about, how do we learn language? What happens to us? What will you answer? How will you answer this question? Should not be very difficult thing, right? It is like asking someone, what happens when you get fever? What happens when you get fever? You have higher temperature, right? You can realize that, right? You have higher temperature and others can feel that too. Not exactly in that sense, but when you learn a language, you know you are learning a language or after you have already learned a language, you speak, others can see and you know. So, this question is about something not obscure. It could be a little bit abstract, I am not denying uh, abstract nature of language learning, but it is something that, that you have gone through. So, having given that background, can you tell me what happens when we learn language? While you are thinking, let me add two parameters to that. When we say language learning, we do not make a distinction at this level between learning and acquisition. What would be the difference between learning and acquisition? And sort of force. Learning could be li with little bit more effort, right? That is what you mean. Whereas, acquisition is automatic. Acquisition is automatic, unavoidable, learning is with effort, okay? But at this time, we are using the two terms interchangeably. When I say language learning, I also mean language acquisition, okay? We are not making strict distinction between the two terms. So, when I am asking you, how do we learn a language? I actually mean, how do we acquire a language? And when I am asking you, we are not talking about learning English when we went to school, when you were a grown up kid. We are talking about the language that you learnt as your natural language, as your first language. Uh, what are the things that happened? Let me talk, let me let you talk. So, what happened when you were learning? I have already asked you this question about number of languages that you speak and all of you grew up speaking a language. Which language did you grow up speaking? Telugu. Telugu. Sir? Malayalam. 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 Telugu. 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 Tamil. Tamil. Hindi. Telugu. 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 Everybody Telugu? Telugu. Telugu. Canada, good. Malayalam. Malayalam. So, this Malayalam. side we have Malayalam people, right? Okay. So, what happened when you were learning Telugu or Malayalam? 
or Canada or Tamil for that matter. What happened? How did you do that? Do you remember? How did you learn it? If someone forces you to tell the story of how you learned a language, can you, what, what would you say? What happened? We don't remember, but I guess we put into memory the sounds which we heard at that phase of our age and we started telling that properly. So you Some put you put sounds in your memory? Uh, sounds and how to articulate them. How to articulate them? Into our memory and form the rules that make the sounds and started communicating with the people around us. Okay. That is what happened. So, if I ask you, okay, okay, for, oh, hold on, let me ask, let me wait before I ask you another question. What happened to you? Just like exposed sort of thing. People around me are just talking. People around you were talking? So, it is like... What? Which language were they speaking around you? Like Telugu. Telugu. So, then it's like when they speak, like I get a direct correlation between the word and the object. So, I learn them quickly. Okay. And, okay, fine. Yeah, hearing sounds and how to, is hearing those the language. Hearing language Telugu, language. other Telugu speakers. Oh. What so happened? I, acquiring how to, how to articulate the sounds. And so, you, when you heard others, then you also acquired how to say those sounds. How to say the sounds right? and what those sounds mean to which object. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. What those sounds mean to which objects? For example, a book means like this. Sound. A book is not a sound. I mean, yeah, right. Book is what? Object. No, no, no. In terms of language, book is what? Word. A word. Very nice. So, first you learned sounds, right? And what are the sounds in book? But of course, we are talking about an English word, but let's say, what's the what's the word for book in Telugu? Pustakam. So, what are the sounds in Pustakam? Pa, pa U, Sa, sa ta, ta, Ka, ka and um. Ma. Right? These are the sounds of this one word Pustakam. Right? So, you first learned these sounds, then did you learn how to make a word? Yes or no? Am I, am I asking you too many questions? Are, are these questions not making any sense? Did you learn how to make, how to make uh, words? Automatically. Automatically. The auto, automatically is true, but did you, if, if I ask you now, okay, fine, you learnt automatically. But if I ask you now, uh, tell me how to make a word. Can you tell me? There are some rules. That is right, that is exactly what I am asking, asking for. So, if I ask you, tell me rules of words, the way words are made, this, and this question is not just for him, this question is for everybody. Tell me the rules of the rules through which we make words. Can you tell me those rules? No. Derivation from other languages. Derivation from other languages. Now, you are adding more complications, but that is okay. So, derivation from which language? Tell me, you learnt Malayalam, right? So, how did you learn Malayalam? They teach you to say a particular word at a particular situation. When that repeats, you tend to learn. Right? For example, if you are a kid and when you are leaving off, someone is else is leaving, you tell the kid to say Tata right. and, you, and repeatedly the kid learns that that is what you have to do, that is what you have to say when you are leaving. And maybe that way I learn. Sure. But, but where is the role of other derivation, other language in that? Oh, that is for previous question. Okay. Sorry. So, uh, and so, does this, can I, can I take it 
what you said as follows. That we learn when people teach us. Can we say that? That would eventually mean that we cannot learn if we are not taught. Is that true? I, I hope I am not asking you too difficult or too complicated questions. Right? But some of you look like I am asking some nuclear science or something. I, I am not asking you how to make a nuclear bomb. Okay? I am asking you how to make a word. Right? So, you, ha you have taken it to a little bit more fundamental level which is fine. But tell me the answer to this question and only tell, tell me only what you think. You do not have to be right or wrong. Can we learn only the things that we are taught or we can learn other things also? We can learn other things. Then do you not think the role of teaching is negligible? Do you, do you, do you see that? The role of conscious teaching to a child is negligible. So, some people can teach you how to say Tata. I, I see sometimes, I am sure you must have seen those things too. Uh, say hello, right? Say thank you. Uh, but those things are responsible in a very minimal way for learning language. And I want you to see that. And therefore, I am asking you these questions that do you remember when you were learning Telugu, how did that happen? So, you said we learned first sounds, two of you said that. If I ask you, can you write down all the Telugu sounds in your notebook? Can you do that? No. And that this is no surprise for me. I have I have talked to you about this thing even last in the last class that this is an example of something else, which we come to in a moment. But you you are right, you are not wrong when you said I learned sounds. But when I ask you to write all the sounds of Telugu, you say, no, I cannot write. Why? Did we learn the rules to make words or did we learn words themselves? Words themselves, right? If that is so, then what is the problem in writing all the words? If you learnt all the words, then what is the problem in writing all the words? No, there could that I can assure you, there could not be new. The sounds that you learnt in Telugu when you were four year old or five year old, there is no extra sound that has been added in Telugu. That I can assure you. Okay, I know nothing, I, I do not speak Telugu, but I can assure you based on my understanding, there are no sounds and this is not just for Telugu. This is for Tamil, Malayalam, Kannada, English, Hindi or for that matter all the languages of the world. No new sounds. A new word may have come, right? Uh, for example, uh, the word computer is not just a word in English, but this is the word in all the languages that we know, right? Do you say a different word for computer in Telugu, in Tamil? You do, right? Do people use that word all the time? Tamil Nadu, yes. Okay. Malayalam? What is the word for computer in Malayalam? Computer, right? But apart from that word, what was the word? Apart from that word, do people use computer also? Yes. Right? So, my point is computer is not just a word for English. It could be a word in many languages. So, a word may have been added, but no new sound has been added. That I can assure you. Right? Still, you cannot write all the sounds. And if you say, we learnt just words, then you should be able to write all the words. And particularly if we learnt only the words that we were taught or we heard, then all the more easier this exercise should be for you to write them. But can you write all the words that you know? 
the answer should be very emphatic no that we cannot write all the words that we know why not so the the let me let me change the question little bit when we say 2 2 plus 2 is 4 right do we learn the process involved in that or do we learn 2 plus 2 is 4 and then we need to learn 2 plus 3 is 5 separately which one do we learn which part do we learn process and that process is what addition addition, addition right so there is a process of addition i don't want to take you into that you already know so we d- we do not learn every single number that is generated through addition what we learn is there is a process you put two different numerical values on two different sides and then a total of that you get as an aggregate for something and then there are other mathematical processes for that so when we learn that process can we add any number after that or do we need to learn for for bigger number for numbers in two digits or three digits and five digits we need to learn additional operations no no additional operations are needed so similarly there is evidence in language that we do not learn words what we learn is the process of making word okay and that process is learned way too early and here the difference is when you learn the process of addition you know that you are learning that when you learn the process of word formation you don't know that you are learning that it's important for people i mean addition and subtractions are very simple they are not even uh, not, at least at least for many people they are not even mathematical processes they are part of general knowledge but then there are complicated mathematical calculations you need to learn them specifically right they do not come to you automatically whereas all the processes involved in word formation they come to you automatically so automatically so effortless that you don't even realize that we don't even know to the extent that if someone asks me write them we cannot about can we say the same thing about mathematics that i know how to th- how to do 3 plus 3 but i don't know how to tell you is is see my point that's the difference between learning the two two things and i have already given you examples of swimming and riding and flying a plane why these kinds of learning are different from learning language get this thing so now let me take you through how it really works okay how how that happens we will come to word formation in a couple of days but then i i want to show you how does it work so we have we have already seen these things that there are lots of rules in in language and those ru- are right now what we are talking about is all those rules we learn automatically before the age of 4 to 5 we have already learned them without us knowing and realizing them we have already learned all the sounds but we can just cannot write them i have learned the process to make any word or even the capable i have through which i have acquired the capability to tell anyone whether this word belongs to my language or not i won't take more than 10 seconds or 10 seconds is also too long a time right so so we do, we don't take too long to tell whether a word belongs to our language or not the computation the scanning or search in that thesaurus work that fast and we know that so l- l- see how how it works but be- before that i want to tell you one more story about this that like like your friend was saying we are someone tells us how to say something for a long time people believed in the whole understanding of language acquisition that 
we learn language is behavior. We learn language by imitating others. We listen to people in the society and then we whatever they say we repeat and we learn. Just now somebody said uh, uh, I forgot who said that, that you said it. okay. So the the process that your friend explained was someone tells us we hear that we repeat that again and we say those things several times and we learn that. Get it? This process of learning was given a name it was called behaviorism and people who, who gave this theory were called behaviorist and the simple rule of this theory was we get input we and we produce output. Get this? But there are limitations of this principle, limitations of this theory which is if we hear if, if my learning is contingent upon listening to something or in a more precise way, if my learning is restricted only to the terms that I hear, okay, then what follows from here is I would not be able to learn the things that I have not heard. See, see, the rest, see the limitation of this theory, I would not be able to understand words that I may not have heard before. Now check yourselves as the speakers of Telugu, Tamil, Malayalam, Kannada, Hindi that have you heard all the words of Telugu, Malayalam, Kannada? At least you cannot say that with confidence that by now I have heard all the words. Right? But just now I gave you an example, if someone gives you a word, whether you, you have heard that word before or not, you understand the meaning of that. Then how did that happen? If, if it was contingent upon, the lear, if learning of a word was contingent upon me listening to that word, then how did that happen that I also know the words that I never heard before? Get my point? because of this, this theory was rejected that no, 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 no. Input equals to output, there seems to be some problem in that. In fact, input is okay that it is limited and we by input we mean what we hear. So, it definitely happens that we hear something, without hearing nothing happens, true we hear something but the output is not directly proportionate to input. Output in fact is infinite. Input may be limited, we do not know how much, it is difficult to quantify, but input is limited, but output is infinite. So, there, are, there, there must be something else happening somewhere. <coughs> On the basis of that, something came up, something else came up. And this is what is called innateness hypothesis for language learning. And in that innateness hypothesis, what was, what was important, this term is borrowed from philosophy, puberty of a stimulus and a stimulus here refers to input. Okay? So, this theory was built on the following that input is limited, but the output is unlimited output is numerous infinite. And then people examined this hypothesis and proposed that learning capacity is innate. Do you understand the meaning of the word innate? Can you tell me what it means? Inbuilt, that is right. So, it also refers to the learning capacity of humans that the learning capacity is inbuilt. So, when we are born, we are born with the capability to learn a language or just to learn language. Making sense so far? All right. Uh, I come to this last part of language computation is part of generative mechanism, right? 
I will introduce this generative mechanism in few minutes, but does language computation make sense to you? Language computation simply refers to language processing that is and, and to be more precise it means learning or internalizing rules of the ones that we just figured out that we do not know. Okay? So, this all those computation is part of generative mechanism which is already here. This is what the, this hypothesis means that this is already here. So, the one more difference between behaviorism and, and uh, innateness hypothesis is there was almost negligible role of human mind in behaviorist hypothesis. Behaviorist hypothesis was simply a repetition, copying or uh, just listening and speaking, practice. These were the key terms of behaviorist hypothesis. All right? Whereas, key terms of innateness hypothesis is the capacity itself is inbuilt and the moment we say inbuilt, it is inbuilt in human mind. Therefore, the role of human mind in acquiring a language is already assumed. It, it does not even require further underlining or highlighting, but, but we need to say that there is a huge role of huge role of human mind in language computation, language processing, unpacking those rules, get it? And, and I talk about generative me mechanism in a few minutes. Imperfect stimulus, what does this mean to you? Imperfect stimulus meaning imperfect input. So, what does this refer to? And it's this. This is an. This is also an important part for us to understand. Imperfect stimulus means when a child is listening to things in society, right? Nobody speaks to children in the way that will be easier for them to learn the language. Have you seen a child growing up? You may not remember yourself as a too too young child, but have you seen a young child growing? All of you must have seen some or, the, some or the other child. What do they do? What do people do to them? When they are talking to children, what do they do to them? Do they talk to them as a pa, u, sa, ta, ka, ma, so that they learn the word pustakam or they just keep talking to them? People just keep talking to them. And definitely children do not like this. Okay? They, in, in fact, if you talk a lot to a child, what does a child do if you talk a lot to them? Any idea? That means you have not seen a child growing. Cry. You know why they cry? No, 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 no. They do not even realize about input. They, at that time, but, but you are right. So much input, you are right. What happens to them is everything that you tell them or you think you are telling them sounds like noise. And what happens if someone keeps talking to you in German, Spanish, French, right sitting next to you for one hour? As a grown up person, you can at least say just shut up man, right? Whether the person understands shut up word or not, you can say just shut up. What is this nonsense? The problem with the child is the child does not even know how to say nonsense, shut up all that. So, the, in response they just start crying, which, which literally means, look I do not understand these things. They, these things do not make any sense to me. But trust me, the acquisition of sounds begin through that. And the fact that people are not aware of what they are saying, they think they are being nice to children without realizing that you are becoming really a nuisance to them. Right? This is what is called imperfect stimulus that nobody is being nice to children in terms of their learning, not that they need you to be nice. The point is the capacity, inbuilt capacity of human mind can work on the basis of imperfect, in, imperfect stimulus, imperfect input and still 
you keep talking, you keep giving them words, sounds, you do not even need to worry whether I am giving all the sounds of Telugu or Tamil or not. In a matter of few months or few days or, or whatever the total number of period may be, the child has figured out all the sounds of languages is spoken around them. I do want to draw your attention to one more point that when children are learning language, they are not learning either Tamil or Telugu or uh, Malayalam or English or anything. And this has a meaning. You, you may say what I am saying means the same thing, but what I am saying has a meaning. They do not learn the, these languages. What they learn is whatever is spoken to them. They are two different things. They, they, for you, they may mean the same thing, but it has different implications. They are not learning Telugu, Tamil, Kannada, Malayalam, Hindi, English. They are learning whatever is being spoken to them. Okay? So, if you learn, if, if a child is born in Tirupati, and the only reason why I am Thiru, uh, I'm, I'm giving you the name of this place Tirupati is because it has, it, it probably that place speaks both Telugu and Tamil equally well and probably that has emerged into a new kind of, different kind of Telugu or a different kind of Tamil. So, what if you are speaking that language to that person? If, if someone is speaking to a child growing up in Delhi, in Hindi, Punjabi or Hindi, Punjabi mixed or whatever, the child is not learning Hindi or Punjabi or anything. The child is learning the language is spoken in Delhi, the language is spoken in its neighborhood and language is spoken to the child. Get it? All that depending upon different children are imperfect stimulus. They go here and they keep going to human mind all the time. Uh, however, the output is completely perfect. When the child speaks, starts speaking, they do say the word pustakam without any difficulty. Okay? A child, if, if you say the word scooter to a child, school to a child, the child says school, scooter. Anybody understands Punjabi here? No? Little bit? Little bit of Hindi? How many of you understand little bit of Hindi? Little bit. Many of you. Well, that is good. That's good. How many of you have been to Delhi? Quite a few of you. Great. Have you heard some Hindi speakers in Delhi, which is an influence of Punjabi saying Sakuta? No? You have, probably you have not or maybe you have not noticed or you have. Yes or no? Yes. Instead of school, they will say, other people say is school. Punjabi people say Sakul, very nice. In fact, you listen, listen to our Prime Minister is speaking, you will find some of these things. Right. I am not making fun of, the, fun of anything, please do not get me wrong. Okay. Sakul, Sakuter, Satation. Okay. Now, what is, hap what, is, what is it that is happening? Let me, let me take you to that process. If you, these are English words, right? Sakul, Sakuter, and Cetacean. When you, when you learn these words as English word, then the first two words, first two sounds of these words are clusters. First two sounds are clusters. Cluster is in the word station, the cluster is between sa and ta. In the word scooter, the cluster is between two sounds, sa and ka. Get it? English speakers use them as clusters. Probably Hindi speakers also do and Tamil speakers also do, but Punjabi speakers do not like clusters. So, they just simplify the cluster. That is, the cluster is gone. If you remove the cluster from there and insert another vowel, then it becomes Sakul, Sakuter, get this thing? So, they are not doing anything wrong. This, this kind of thing may appear funny to us, by us I mean funny to people who do not speak that way, 
but keep in mind the process. The process of Punjabi is limited number of clusters and, and trust me, I will come back to clusters uh, in a couple of days and then you will, uh, you will understand these clusters and sounds in more details. Right now, I am giving you this example for just simple reason to see that if you talk to them with the language, in the language that follows clusters, the child will learn cluster. If you talk to them without clusters, they will not learn clusters and eventually when they say something, they will use that word without cluster or for that matter, if they use, remember what I told you, they do not learn words or we do not learn words, what we learn is the process of words, underlying process of word formation. So, if they learn and if they need a new word and that word has a cluster, they will just remove that cluster and use it, get it? So, this is why they speak that way. This is what I am saying, the stimulus is very minimal, little, little limited and all the way to imperfect. However, the output is complete. No one, no one learns incomplete words. When the child produce, starts producing a word, the words are complete. They have learnt all the sounds and all the rules involved in word formation. Get it? Specific examples are coming up, I will give you those examples. So, look at this this again, uh, how it works, Every, many things that I have so, told you so far are written in these, these two, three sentences. So, one of the most powerful theories of language learning assumes that all normal human children are biologically hardwired to learn language. This is what is the meaning of, what was the word? Uh, innate. Human children are, are by birth guaranteed that they will learn language and here you can read this carefully, we are talking about normal human children, not children with disabilities. Unfortunately, there are some children who may have some kind of disabilities, so we are, we, this theory does not talk about them. There may be some kind of learning deficit or deficiencies, those, those are unfortunate situations, but for normal children, the capacity to learn is inbuilt, alright. Input is fuzzy, imperfect, limited, inadequate, both in quantity and quality. Very limited in quantity, Qu quality may be very distorted, right, but the child fixes all those things. And remind me about these things, I will give you more examples or even, uh, I mean th these examples will come up anyway in any case. The the word poverty of a stimulus was first, uh, was borrowed from uh, philosophy as I told you and this was Plato's idea, okay. And in fact, that is known as Plato's problem in philosophy where he says, how does it happen that given so little, we learn so much. And he is not really talking about language, but Plato's idea was, was borrowed and then applied to this kind of learning situation. So this is why this, this stimul, poverty of a stimulus is credited to Plato's problem, alright, okay. With the help of in, okay, so now, now there is one more thing that I need to tell you. This inbuilt capacity has a name and the name is called language acquisition device. Language acquisition device. In short, it is called LAD. Okay? This is a complex <coughs> system, I will elaborate that uh, little, little later. We, you will remember this thing, language acquisition device. Now, it is important for me to note here, uh, or at least for you, that this is not a physical device. Okay, this is a hypothetical device. Right yesterday, we have looked at the fact that there is nothing in here. So, when we say human mind, 
has language acquisition device in it, we, we are not talking about a device like this or a device like this. These are physical devices. Language acquisition device is an idea, it is a hypothetical device. Get this thing? What it does and why it, ha why it has been hypothesized is the following. What it does is, it, it has two parts in it. It is called, well, sorry, it has just one thing. Inside that device, this one thing which is called universal grammar. Have you heard this term before? No. Okay. Let us look at this thing. This will make more sense. You see, in the middle, the in the circle represents human mind, okay, which has got language acquisition device in it. And that language acquisition device has something called universal grammar. The, the word grammar you may must have heard before. What does that mean? What does that mean? The rules of format uh, set of rules, right? And and I am asking these questions not to check your vocabulary or anything. I am asking you these things just so that we are talking about a specifics. Okay? A set of rules or a book that describes rules. Most of the time when we hear the word grammar, a uh, uh, idea of a book comes to mind, right? Which has which is like a rule book grammar of English or grammar of Hindi or Telugu, Kannada. This universal grammar is not grammar of any language. As you can see the term, it says universal grammar. If at all it is a grammar of anything, it is grammar of all the languages of the world. All the languages of the world. Get this thing? This grammar has two parts. One part is called principles and the other part is called parameters. Okay? There are just two parts in that, principles and parameters. Principle dictates the rules that are common to all the languages of the world and parameters talk about the rules that are different in different languages. Okay? If there is a rule that are different in too many languages, right? they become universal for those many languages. Get it? So, it is hard to put a finger on, on the rules of parameters, but it is so easy to talk about principles. And those principles are not really very complicated principles, they can be as simple as all the languages must have sounds. And here by language we refer to natural language, spoken language. The moment we say we are talking about spoken language, we cannot have a spoken language without sounds. That is a universal principle. All the languages of the world must have verbs. These are, this is also a universal principle all the languages must have sentences, all the languages must have words. These are universal principles and I have given you the examples of parameters. The, the other details such as where the words occur in a sentence and more specific details become part of parameters. So, a, a system that contains both principled rules and parametric variations is called universal grammar. And that grammar, now you can see that includes both differences and similarities of all the languages, all the rules of all the languages. Let us put it this way, all the rules of all the languages is embedded in universal grammar and that we have here. This is all hypothesis. Therefore, we talk about it as language acquisition device. Get this thing? If there is any, any confusion about it, any difficulty about it, you can ask me this thing later as well. Okay? Now, uh, uh,
So, this is how it works as you can see a normal human child is hardwired to acquire a language from the immediate environment and this is a, another keyword that guarantees us that if you are born in Chennai, you will learn Tamil effortlessly. If you are born in Paris, you will learn French effortlessly and again the word born is not important. What is important is if you live there, you could be born anywhere and if you are dislocated to another place, then you learn the language of that place. Okay? So, the word born is not important. Word, what is important is if you are if you are in a particular place while you are learning the language, while, while you are growing up, then you learn the language of that place. This is what it refers to when we are saying from the immediate environment. Get this thing? From the immediate environment part. And we, the way we learn it is through the help with the help of language acquisition device which has got universal grammar in it. If you look at this scheme, then it talks about input and output. The input goes in human mind and then it gives us output. Now, if you compare both behaviorist hypothesis and innateness hypothesis, you can see that the whole role of this circle was missing from that or was not at least hypothesized. With the hypothesis of these things, this mechanism guarantees us that the fact that we know lot more than we have been exposed to is because of this. And what also follows from this, particularly with the hypothesis of universal grammar, right? with the term of universal grammar and universal grammar being in your mind, do not be confused that we will be able to, we, why, why is it that we do not speak all the languages of the world? If we have rules of all the languages of the world in our mind, right? if we are born with all the rules, then why do we not speak all the rules, all the, all the languages? The constraint is, sorry? No. Input. Do, do we, input, do we even know the memory of, do we even know the capacity of human mind? It is hard to define it in terms of 32 GB or 500 GB, it is impossible, we do not know. Therefore, we cannot say the memory could be a problem. You know all the languages of the, all the sentences of your language. In fact, you know all the sentences that you may not have ever heard before. Do you feel any lack of memory? Does it tell you that delete some files? Does it? It never tells you delete some more some files, otherwise you cannot keep anything else, anything extra, right? So, uh, we, we, are, we are not looking at this aspect at this time. Uh, if time permits, I will show you some of the things. In fact, you, sh you should be aware of this thing that one of the goals of modern science, which includes modern engineering, is to come up with a device which can function as human mind and the efforts are on to come up with the device in terms of computers. Scientists have come a long way. You can, you can see 10 years behind and you can realize every, every, every next week devices change. If, you are to, if we are talking about a phone, it's, it gets outdated every next week. Right? Uh, we did not have computers, we did not have supercomputers which will fit in this room with the memory 20 years ago as much as we have in an iPhone now. Am I, am I making sense? So, there has, there has been a lot that had changed, but the efforts are on. What has not happened is we do not have a device which works like human mind. In fact, lot of devices that we know can do multitasking now is also the effort of replicating functioning of human mind, that human mind can do multitasking. So, so we, 
by saying anything, we are not trivializing efforts that has gone in and the achievements that, that has been established so far. But what we are saying is, the, we do not have, a, we yet do not have a device which functions like human mind, which and, and we do not know simple things, we do not even know the capacity of human mind, right. We do not know the processing ability of human mind. There is, there is no way to measure how what I told you works, that what happens in human mind that in a fraction of moment you can tell this word does not belong to my language. It is that fast. So, so, so there are lots of things that we know, there are lots of things that we know, we do not know. Now, the reason I started talking about that device is study of language has a huge role to play in it. Okay? In fact, study of language gives us a window to the functioning of human mind. How does it really work? And can that be, can that be translated into electrical signals in form of a machine? Can we have an artificial language for a machine to understand which can make it work the way human mind works with respect to natural language? These are the, these are the new frontiers and challenges of modern science and engineering. It is no, no new challenge, it has been on for last half a century. It will continue as long as uh, it is achieved and, uh, and we do not we don't, we don't know, it is hard to predict right now. But these things have huge, huge role to play in that. So, coming back, I, I only wanted you to know uh, before we stop, you have, you have a different class at this time? Yeah. So, we, we, we want to stop now that from behaviorist hypothesis, the role of human mind was missing. Innateness hypothesis incorporates that role and it, it takes care of the fact that why does it happen that we can, we, we also know the things that we have not heard before. Why do we not speak all the languages of the world if we have all the rules in our mind? You, you, are, you are absolutely right. The role of natural environment is very important. The fact that we do not get input from all the languages of the world is what is responsible for us not speaking all the languages. In fact, the capacity and memory is so much that hypothetically speaking, if you can provide input to human mind from all the languages of the world, it will speak all the languages of the world. You will be able to speak. Now, this is too far, too big an hypothesis because we know that there is no place on, the, on this earth which speaks all the languages of the world at a time. A child growing up in any place in the matter of 5 years or 6 years will not be able to go through all the languages of the world, will not be able to receive input in all the languages of the world. Therefore, we do not speak all the languages of the world. However, hypothetically speaking, if provided those inputs, we will be able to speak. Get, get this point? So, these things may sound little bit too stipulative, little bit too hypothetical. Nonetheless, they take care of the claims that they are making. Okay? More uh, on the role of universal grammar and uh, what we mean by knowledge of language next time when we meet. Okay? Thank you.